Um, it's quite impossible to talk about my love of music without actually talking about my parents and my uh, family. Um, you see, my, my mom and dad are, are from uh, China. And they came to New York City and they, I mean, they, it really is like the, the American dream. You know, they, came to, they came to New York City with $200 and a couple of suitcases and they crashed with friends in Chinatown in 1975. And, um, you know, they learned how to speak English by going to night school, but they supplemented their English education by watching a lot of television. And, which is why my name is Telly. <laughs> now, in London, that, that means a whole different thing, I know, because uh, you guys call the television telly, but actually, my mom's favorite show uh, was a show that was very popular in the 70s called Kojak. Who remembers Kojak? Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Awesome. Well, co the star of Kojak was this big, fat, Greek actor, bald actor named Telly Zabalas. He always had a Tootsie Pop in his mouth, and he always said, who loves you, baby? And uh, he solved crimes. You know, all those crimes were solved within an hour. You know, it was great. And it was my mom's, he was kind of a sex symbol, actually, in the 70s. He was, like, people thought he was very sexy, right? Yeah. yeah, well, I think my mom had a little crush on him. That's fine. <laughs> and, um, and so it was my mom's favorite show, so she named me Telly. And uh, my dad supplemented his English education by listening to a lot of popular American music in the 70s, which meant the Saturday Night Fever recording, the Bee Gees, Gloria Gaynor, Disco, ABBA, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, John Denver, um, Bread, you know, it was these, all these great, great artists, and so he would always have his LP collection playing all the time, and all of that music kind of seeped into me. Um, now, their journey to America actually started when they were kids. Uh, you see, both my parents grew up in communist China during the Cultural Revolution, and um, they grew up in an environment where Mao, Mao Zedong, was basically taking all the kids out of schools and not giving them an education, but forcing them to work in the labor, the, uh, labor fields. It was kind of the agrarian revolution. He didn't believe that education was important. So, um, so my parents quickly realized that this was not a place of opportunity for them. So they did what a lot of young people did at the time. They escaped communism by going to Hong Kong. Now you have to understand that Hong Kong, where my parents are from, which is the south of China, Canton, in Guangzhou, it is um, a narrow body of waterway from Hong Kong. And my parents both swam from communist China to Hong Kong. Now that's a seven hour swim, right? And I can't swim seven laps in a pool without getting winded. Um, my mom actually said that she, she did the journey with several friends. She snuck to the riverbank late at night and she's actually never heard or seen those friends ever since. She doesn't know if they're alive, if they're if they're dead, if they have kids like her, you know, if they're living in New York, maybe next door, who knows. My dad actually swam um, and he was caught the first time and was sent to a re-education camp where he was forced to work the fields for years and years and years as punishment. But then my father tried again um, and made it the second time. And he actually had to send a telegram back to my grandma in communist China to say that he was doing okay, but he couldn't use his real name or he was going to get in trouble. So he gave himself a new name. And his new Chinese name was Loi Song, which in Chinese literally means born again. So he sent a telegram that said Loi Song is fine. And grandma knew, right, he's in, he's in Hong Kong now. Then my parents, actually, they didn't swim together, but both my parents met at a travel agency in Hong Kong. My mom was a tour guide, my dad was a file clerk, and um, you know, they met each other, and they started to get to know each other, and all the things that they had in common. They were like, oh, you're cute. Oh, I think you're cute. <laughs> oh, you like wonton soup? I like wonton soup. <laughs> oh, you swam seven hours to freedom? I swam seven hours to freedom. <laughs> and they quickly fell in love. And, um, but they realized they had bigger plans. They wanted to raise a family and have a kid. And, um, and they realized that they wanted to do that in America, the land of opportunity. So um, that's when they decided to go to New York City. And these next two songs are straight off my dad's LP collection, or as, as I like to think of it, kind of his phonics books in a way, when he was learning how to speak English. And um, these two songs have a very special meaning to me because they always remind me of my parents' incredible journey to America that allows me to be here today singing for all of you in London. The water is wide I can't get over Neither have I The wings to fly Give me a boat 
that can carry two and both shall grow my love and I featured the amazing Mr. Dara Stewart on the bass. <laughs> on drums, we have Mr. Tommy Clayton. <laughs> and on the piano, I schlepped them all the way here from New York City, Mr. Jesse Vargas. <laughs> um, this next song is also from my dad's 70s catalog, and it's kind of become a um, an actor's theme song to me. You see, actors kind of live our lives like gypsies on the road. I'm, I'm on the road right now. I'm in London, um, in my apartment in New York, or as you guys call it, my flat in in, uh, in New York. Um, and I have a tiny little flat that's about two blocks from Times Square. It's 500 square feet, tiny, but it, it does the job. It's my 500 square feet. And um, I, I did the, you know, I, I was trying to figure out actually. I've lived there for six years, and I was like. How much, how much time have I actually spent in this flat that I, that I call my own in New York City? And so I, I went back and I looked through my calendars and I did the math. And I'm Asian, so I'm very, very good at math. And, um, 
and I, I, I saw that. I was like, oh my god, I've only lived in this apartment for about three years, less than three years. It's about half the amount of time that I've actually had the place. And my friends who come and visit me in my flat say that they always see um, my giant red suitcase in the middle of the living room. And it is always half packed. It's because that's, as a gypsy, as an actor, you never know. You might get one phone call and you're on the next plane to Los Angeles to shoot an episode of Glee, or you're on the next plane to California to do the, the out of time a new Broadway show, or, or you, you're flying to God knows where for your next job. And um, this next song is really encapsulates the, uh, the gypsy lifestyle. <laughs> Wait 
With a pencil pen, I can hold my head up high. For I've got a goal again, I've got a drive again. I'm gonna feel my heart coming alive again before the day. You know, the, my father, you know, with coming here as an immigrant, he just wanted a better life for me. And um, the American dream for him was a monetary one. He wanted to me to go to Harvard to become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, just so that I could have all the things that he couldn't have as an immigrant. So, so I get it. Um, so I worked very hard in school because he wanted me to. I, actually, it's a crazy story. I, I, I was on a family vacation in Boston when I was around seven or eight years old. And I remember my, we were on one of these vacations you know, where, you know, you kind of go to all the historical sites and you get on the bus, you get off the bus, they go, 15 minutes here, take a picture in front of Ben Franklin's house. Or here, 15 minutes, take a picture in front of Independence Hall. And um, my parents ditched the tour and they took me to Cambridge and they stood me outside the gates of Harvard and there's my dad holding my little eight-year-old hand and he says to me, Penny, do not do restaurant business like your father. You study hard, you go to Harvard, become doctor, lawyer, engineer, make a lot of money. <laughs> then you buy nice Rolex for daddy. <laughs> True story. Um, so I worked very hard at school, and I worked really hard taking the SATs. Now, I don't know if you guys know what the SATs are um, here in England, but the SATs is this big exam that you take so that, you know, the higher, the higher score you get on this big nationwide exam, the better university you get to go to, right? Um, so I worked really hard, studied so hard for my SATs, and the Wednesday morning that I took the SATs, I decided, you know what, I'm going to save up all of my allowance money, and I'm going to go take myself to see a Broadway show. I'm going to go to the TKTS booth, and I'm going to get a half-price ticket for myself. And, um, and you guys have a TKTS booth here as well at Leicester Square. I love that. I love that that's something that we both share in London, New York. And um, I got there, and I got to the booth, and I saw, oh, they had tickets for Carol Channing in Hello, Dolly. 
and I could not wait. This was one of, I mean, she had not done this role at the time, it was the her 90s. She had not done the role in like 25 years. And so I, I couldn't wait. And so I, I, got on my, I got on the line, and it was a beautiful day. It was 80 degrees, sunshine, not a cloud in the sky. Well, I'm standing on this line waiting for my ticket. Storm clouds start rolling in, and it is a huge downpour. It rains cats and dogs, but I am not moving from this line. I'm getting my ticket to go see Kiero Chieni with Kiero Jowl. So I get to the theater. I'm soaking wet, and I'm, I'm like really soaking wet every inch of my clothes. And I'm sitting next to a gray-haired old lady who, you know, had probably bought her tickets a long time ago, looking at this strange, you know, boy who's soaking wet next to her. And I'm freezing. It's air conditioned in, in the, all the New York theater. New York theaters are very, very air conditioned. And it's very chilly, so I probably caught pneumonia. But I just remember hearing Carol at the end of Act One singing, "Before the parade passes by, I'm gonna go." And I, you know, Carol is a star because she makes you feel like she's singing those words right to you. It doesn't matter if there's 1,200 people in a theater. She's singing every word right to you. And I did. I felt like she was saying, Before the parade, you, that wet Chinese boy on the balcony, before the parade passes you by, I think you need to do what you want to do and join me on a Broadway stage and sing and dance. I did. I felt like I had one of those crazy out-of-body experiences. Carol Channing was singing before the parade passes by to me. And um, so I, I, the other, the, that show meant a lot to me. Uh, the other show that meant quite a lot to me when I was growing up was Rent. Now, how many Rent, do we have any Rent fans? Good. I'm so glad to hear that. I have several people in my, in my Rent family who are here in the house today as well who've done the show with me. And I'm so thrilled that they're here. And um, Rent meant a lot to me. You know, growing up when I was 16 years old, I, I got my, my $20 lottery ticket to go and sit in the first row of Rent. You know, Rent was the show that invented that, the rush ticket for the students. You know, for only $20, you could sit in the front row. And um, I, I just remember sitting in the front row right there and, 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 and looking up at that stage and going, oh my god. Look at all, look at the diversity on that stage. There's black, there's white, there's Asian, there's tall, there's short, there's old, there's young, there's men, there's women, there's everything in between. It was awesome. And it, for, for the first time it opened up my eyes and I said, I could maybe do that one day. And, um, and fast forward 10 years in 2006, I joined the Broadway company of Rent and I'm standing on this line singing Seasons of Love and I look down at that seat that I sat in 10 years ago and, and I, see, I see some other kid looking up at me like this and I'm, I know exactly what he's thinking. He's looking up going, maybe I could do Rent one day. Um, so this next song is from Rent and it's, um, I think it's one of my favorite Broadway love songs. Thank you. 
think they meant it when they said you can't buy love. Now I know you can't rent it, but at least you are my love. Oh yes, you are on a line. Oh, I want to discover something is true as this is.